Well, our guest tonight is Lloyd Chapman. He's president and founder of the American Small Business League. That's ASBL.com. He's an advocate for small business. You may or may not know that the federal government is required to set aside a certain percentage of government contracts to small business. But what he found was that these contracts were actually going to Fortune 500 companies, even though they were not qualified as small business, and in many cases to foreign companies. Lloyd Chaplin, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, your struggles with a small business, uh, as a small business advocate against big government and big business alliances. Well, yeah, I was writing a blog about this earlier in the day, and um, in 2002, I stumbled onto the fact that there were 5,000 of the largest companies in the world on the Small Business Administration's database of small businesses. And that was in yeah 2002, and I got a congressional investigation, the Associated Press picked it up, and I thought it was going to be over. And I was wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong. Uh, I was just reading something a while ago, surprised me. I've, I've won 20 lawsuits against the Obama administration. Wow. And I won, gosh. I, and what, what, what was the character of the lawsuits? I'm suing the government to force them to release information under the Freedom of Information Act that shows that they're covering up fraud in federal small business contracting programs. Hmm. And um, again, the things that they do are just really almost not believable to someone. Um, it's just surprising. Uh, the Justice Department, by the way, uh, has been my major opponent. So as I have tried to expose evidence of felony federal contracting fraud, which the penalty for that is 10 years in prison, my number one uh, opponent is the Justice Department. Yeah. I just filed a lawsuit on Friday against the Army. So if you ask the Obama administration for any, any information that proves they're giving small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms, you're going to court, <laughs> and you wow. better have a lot of money. Wow. wow. But it's, uh, it's, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and it's, and it's, all, it's the same sort of thing we keep seeing in scandal after scandal. When improprieties come out with the IRS, the Department of Justice denies, blocks it. The same thing that we're seeing even with the Snowden case, where as information is released, they deny it and, uh, and block any other information. And then come after him rather than looking at internal procedures and saying, uh, you know, this is, this is something that is unconstitutional. We need to fix that. They go after the whistleblower or they go after, still go after the Tea Parties. Uh, they're, they're not even, nobody, nobody from the FBI has even talked to any of the Tea Parties that were wrongfully audited uh, by the IRS. Absolutely. I mean, they are on me. I'm telling you. In fact, I, uh, I won a lawsuit a few months ago to show that the uh, SBA had hired a company. I want to say it's APCO, APCO, an international uh, firm that specializes in, in crisis management. And uh, they've got offices all around the world. This is probably one of the largest uh, public relations firms on earth. And here I am, you know, a little small business advocate in Northern California, and I've got this gigantic international PR firm on my case, and they just interfere with everything you're trying to do. If you want to issue a press release or write a blog or whatever you know I'm doing, I can see the interference of it, and I can see, I'll call it the fingerprint of the federal government and the companies they've hired to try to shut me up. But um, Well, it's interesting you would, you would mention that because I've just been doing some research on a company called Palantir, mm -hmm. and this came up because of the release of the information from Snowden talking about the PRISM program, and a lot of people started asking questions, is this the same PRISM program that Palantir does? Because Palantir is a major contractor for the intelligence communities, for the CIA, the NSA. As a matter of fact, they were funded with venture capital from the CIA's venture capital company, NQTEL. How, how's that for a competitive business, that the CIA has their own venture capital company that goes out and creates these things? Now, of course, Palantir has denied that they are the PRISM program, but the stuff that they do, the data mining that they do, is exactly the type of stuff that we see in this NSA scandal. And going back, there's an article from uh, March in 2011 from Think Progress. And in that article, they were talking about how Palantir was one of two other companies. And these three companies worked for the Chamber of Commerce, U.S. Chamber of Commerce lawyers in terms of going in and doing data mining on uh, Facebook and on LinkedIn about their enemies, about the Chamber of Commerce enemies. And this was something that some congressmen got involved in. So this is going back to 2011, we see, and this is why people need to be concerned about uh, data, 
uh, and the, the surveillance state. Just as you said, they're on you, you see things happening to you. You don't have to be doing anything wrong. You could just do something like file a FOIA request, which is what you did, and all of a sudden you start getting opposition from the establishment, from the government. You know, my, my father worked with the CIA uh, back in the 70s, and um, he told me 10 years ago, he says, anytime you sue the federal government, it's standard operating procedure that they monitor all your communications. Hmm. And of course, I've been suing them since uh, the late 80s. And I've had as many as 15 lawsuits against the government at one time, and I'm going to file probably 12 this summer. Mm -hmm. so I, I have no doubt that they're just, you know, they're listening to, to everything, every oh, yeah. phone call I make and every email I send. In fact, I'd say something funny. Um, I think they actually watch me write these press releases. So sometimes I'll kind of divert <laughs> from press releases and send them some little nasty uh, notes from me to them. Right? <laughs> Well, you know, I, haven't, I haven't sued them, and I, I'm sure they're watching, looking for my records. I mean, I'm a Verizon customer, so they've, they've gotten some information on me, and I don't believe their denials that it's just uh, nothing but metadata. I mean, we've had people telling us for decades, whistleblowers, 10 years ago, right after 9-11, 12 years ago, saying that uh, they were going after everybody's total data, and that's exactly the same sort of thing we see from Snowden. But let's talk about business. Let's talk about... Uh, you know, I mean, I come from a small business background. Uh, both my uh, father and both, both grandparents uh, had small businesses, and uh, we didn't do any government contracting. But, you know, one of the things that we see over and over again from big business is that they not only have these secret backdoor deals with the government like we see at, at Bilderberg or elsewhere, but they also come out with, uh, and they don't pay taxes, they don't create jobs, but they also create a lot of regulation that gets in the way of small businesses. Are you involved in that in any way in terms of your advocacy for small business? To some degree, in fact, um, you know, if you have uh, 50 employees or more, you've got to start complying with a lot of different, you know, regulations in the government. That's right. So, so, so the government says, you know, if you have over 50 employees, you're apparently you're a big business. <laughs> but as we sit here and talk today, Rolls Royce is considered a small business by the United States government. Mm -hmm. uh, fin, fin Mechanica, the largest defense contractor in Italy, is getting millions in U.S. government small business contracts. So it's kind of a, you know... Uh, you and know, and they, when, you say they're con when, you, when you say they're considered to be small businesses, you're talking about the fact that even though the government has, has mandatory set-asides at a certain percentage of government contracts, let's say if it's road building or if it's defense contracts, that a certain percentage has to be set aside for small businesses, You've found out in your lawsuits and your successful FOIA requests, you found out that those are not actually be set, being set aside for small businesses. Absolutely not. It's really not even me. Um, the SBA Inspector General, the General Accounting Office, the Inspector Generals for other agencies. In fact, the General Accounting Office has accused the Small Business Administration of encouraging people to commit fraud. I think I can remember what it said. I believe it says, um, by refusing to hold firms accountable, the SBA and contracting agencies have sent a message to the contracting community that there are um, no penalties or punishment for committing fraud. Wow. And, and in, in my way of thinking, that sounds like they're encouraging fraud. Yeah. Um, yeah. The SBA inspector general has found that the Small Business Administration itself is giving small business contract, a contract to some of the biggest companies in Europe. Hmm. So, uh, but it's, it's not just me. It's actually, you can, you can see it on the ASBL website uh, in the media page under document library, you can see these investigations by a number of federal agencies that uh, have accused the SBA of actually encouraging people to commit fraud. Wow. By the way, that's a, that's a felony with a 10 year prison term. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, to me, I'm not sure what they have to do before the FBI steps in and starts taking a look at it. But we're talking about in the last decade, you're talking maybe a trillion dollars in wow. federal contracts that by law should go to the middle class the small businesses where most Americans work, where all the jobs are created, mm -hmm. are being converted to foreign-owned companies. That's I'm, right. Yeah, is, not only is it going to large uh, companies, but it's going to large foreign companies. Yeah. And that's it's, what everybody's concerned about when we see these secret confabs uh, like Bilderberg. You know, that right in the midst of a major influence peddling scandal in the UK, they have this big meeting where they spend millions and millions of dollars to keep everyone far, far away from whatever they're doing, don't allow any transparency, any reporting, any recording of what they're doing. And you have to ask yourself, when these largest companies meet for several days with these uh, government officials, 
is this what they're talking about? Of course they're talking about business deals. Oh yeah, one thing, uh, you know, President Obama promised he'd have the most transparent administration in history. Yeah. And I believe uh, the mainstream media, uh, I think it was CNN or Associated Press, found out he's got the least transparent administration in history. And most most transparently was, criminal, I think is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I was right. uh, writing about this this morning. Uh, when you look at the government's database of suppliers, there's a very critical piece of information. It was called the parent company done in Bradstreet number. And that's how you could tell if a company was a legitimate small business or the division or subsidiary of a Fortune 500 firms. And in 2010, the Obama administration removed that, that data. And I sued them and, and forced them to restore it for a couple of years. But just think about what's, what's the justification behind removing the parent company done in Bradstreet number from the government's database of suppliers when you've got these huge problems that are being reported in the mainstream media about small business contracts being diverted to Fortune 500 firms, you know, that would be some that you'd want to, you know, keep on there. But, but the truth is the government's trying to remove all transparency for the public and the media. Yes. And it's, you know, it's, it's very disappointing as I, as I have worked with this small business advocacy thing for 20 years, I've come to understand every agency is that way. Every agency works just like the SBA. They're doing the opposite of what they're supposed to be doing. They're not representing the best interests of the American people. And they're, um, you know, they're, they're committing fraud. And, I, and you see that across the government. And I just wonder how much longer the American people are going to put up with that. Yeah, it's interesting to talk to you because it's like no matter what area we look at from the government, we see massive amounts of fraud and in your face about it. And then when people try to get more information to go public about the fraud, they find that they're opposed by Eric Holder's Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. Same story we see no matter what the subject, the MO is the same in every area. Well, tell me what your solution is with the American Small Business uh, League that you've got there. Well, you know, what I try to do is I just try to get the stories out in the press. I got this story um, that CBS did in Boston um, last week that you can go to the Internet and look at it. Um, and I got a story on CBS out of San Jose about a year ago, and I issue press releases all the time in blogs. I blog on the Huffington Post. I got lots of videos on YouTube. My appearance is on on. Uh, you know, the Alex Jones show. And I just try to keep it out there, you know, in the public eye. And I've got a bill I wrote in Congress called um, H.R. 1622. And uh, it's called the Fairness and Transparency Contracting Act. And if that bill were passed, it would create more jobs than any economic stimulus program that President Bush or President Obama ever proposed. And it just simply says that the federal government would no longer report awards to publicly traded companies as small business awards. Right. Because the Small Business Act defines a small business as being independently owned, which means not publicly traded. Mm -hmm. So that, that bill is no new taxes, no new spending, what I call free and easy, would create millions of jobs, and I know it has no chance of passing because it's going to take money away from the corporate giants that fund all these political campaigns and put them in the hands of the American people, and these big corporations aren't going to let that happen. But I'm still going to, I'm still going to fight and uh, try to force them you know, to show their hand well, you know, that's, that's a common technique, isn't it? They just come in and they redefine things. If they've got to set aside for a small business, they just come in and say, well, you know, IBM is a small business or whatever, uh -huh. right? I mean, it, it just meaning, you know, word definitions don't mean anything to them anymore. And they just come in and willy-nilly change things. And they play semantics with the language, just like we're seeing in the denials from the NSA and the denials from these other people. They, they play with this with semantics and basically lie to your face about it. I mean, they, everybody knows that they're lying. What's <laughs> they're, they're not fooling anybody. What's shocking is, you know, it, it kind of seems like a lot of people in the mainstream media are almost helping them. Oh, yeah. Because uh, my story, um, you, it's very, very difficult to get this story out, by the way. Very, very difficult. Uh, I did an interview for CBS in Washington about 14 months ago. And, uh, you know, they interviewed me for about an hour. They made me go out in the street and walk back and forth and take video of me walking back and forth. And when it was all over, I sat there with the um, reporter, the producer, the cameraman, and said, let me guys say something. This story will never air. It'll mm -hmm. never air. And it didn't. Yeah. And for every story that I have had air, like the CBS Boston story, I probably had one or two canceled. I had the Washington Post drop a story on this about six months ago. They interviewed me for uh, uh, two hours. And they're mm -hmm. supposed to write a story about how Fortune 500 firm gets get most small business contracts, and that story, you know, never ran. Well, you want to talk about big business, 
media is big business. Just in oh, the last yeah. couple of years, there's been a massive consolidation from about four dozen companies down to five. And so yeah. you talk about a concentration of power, you talk about big business, and of course, they're going to toe the line for big business and big government, because in many cases, uh, look, at you know, GE owns media companies. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's just an interlocking directories where you see more and more a concentration of wealth and power, just as we saw, again, at Bilderberg. You had a great article uh, in HuffPost about should the federal government be giving small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms. And in that, you had some interesting st statistics. You said that over 99% of U.S. firms have less than 500 employees. Yep. 98% have less than 100 employees, and 89% have less than 20. And there's yep. only over 28 million small businesses in America responsible for over 50% of the private sector workforce and over 50% of the GDP. And yet, large businesses in America have created somewhere between zero and 10 percent of the new jobs in America. Absolutely. Yeah. It's shocking. It's shocking. The um, Coffin Foundation did a study a couple years ago that said small businesses have created 100 percent of the net new jobs since 1980. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is true. The Census Bureau says over 90. The Coffin Foundation says 100 percent. We all know big corporations shipping jobs overseas like crazy. So think right. about what it means. Um, if the Coffin Foundation is correct, which I believe it is, and 100% of the net new jobs in this country have come from small businesses, and yet when you look at the economic stimulus programs, they're giving you know 99% of the money to the Fortune 500 firms that haven't created one job in 30 years. That's, that's right. insane. It's insane. But but that's what you see. And those jobs that they're creating are jobs that are in America. They're American jobs in most cases. That's right. You know, we, I was talking to you about at the beginning about how uh, both grandfathers and my father were had businesses, and none of those businesses would I be able to do today. Certainly not my sons. I in my lifetime, there were too many regulations for me to continue on with my father's business because they were just regulating small companies that did the kind of thing that they were doing out of business. And so I went into a, so a retail uh, business for a short period of time. But you know, even there. That's getting very difficult. Even my sons would have a difficult time doing what I did 30 years ago. So it's, it's, you, you see these opportunities being shut down, and it's not just manufacturing jobs that are being sent overseas. It is excessive regulation in this country as well. Yeah, you know, I, I, um, I'm starting to, to see what feels to me almost like an anti-small business sentiment. You know, uh, we gave out those statistics. There's no question that small businesses are the engine of economic growth in America. Um, and there's one little agency in Washington to help those companies. That's the Small Business Administration. Um, President Obama has proposed to cut the Small Business Administration budget by $100 million. And their budget, by the way, is peanuts. I mean, their budget is just peanuts compared to other agencies. So $100 million is a huge cut to their budget. But he's going to increase foreign aid by $9 billion. It's insane. Right. So here's this one agency for small businesses. In fact, I'll tell you right now, I, I, I've told a lot of people this in the media. I, I predict that Barack Obama is going to try to close the Small Business Administration by combining it with the Commerce Department. So people need to understand that combining the SBA with the Commerce Department is the same as closing it. In 1984, when Ronald Reagan tried to close the SBA, his, uh, the way he was going to close it was combining it with the Commerce Department. So people need to understand combining the Small Business Administration and Commerce is synonymous with closing it. And Barack Obama's going to try that. You, you mark my words, and I'm going to do everything I can to stop them. But think how crazy it is when small businesses are the heart of our economy. They create all the jobs. They're certainly paying their fair share of taxes. And we've got a government that wants to close, you know, the only agency that they've got to help them. It's, well, it's I, I, I wouldn't mind necessarily seeing them close as long as they close the Chamber of Commerce and a lot of other things. Too. Yeah. I'd like to just see government gets smaller everywhere. But uh, I would certainly imagine that Obama is uh, interested. If, if small business is creating most of the jobs in America, my personal take on it is that Obama doesn't want to see uh, jobs created in America. That's just my personal uh, opinion. After looking at him and studying what they're doing, it looks to me as if, you know, from our perspective here, it looks like they're deliberately trying to deindustrialize and impoverish America, and that's just part of the plan. If you want to do that, the best way to do it is to shut down small business because they're the ones who create the most jobs in America, and they're the ones who have freedom and independence 
the most uh, from government because they're involved in their local, these are local communities. This is what I call free market. I don't like to use the word capitalism anymore. It's gotten such a bad name from crony capitalism and the TARP program and all these different things. I, I don't like to use the word capitalism anymore, but there is, as we see here in, in Austin, there's a lot of vibrant small businesses that are out there hiring people, interacting on a voluntary basis with people. That's a good thing, but they shut that down through regulation, through excessive yep. taxation, and, and I hope, they, hope we can change that. Well, if there's one last thing you'd like to leave us with, we're about out of time here. Uh, tell us about your organization and um, uh, how people can get in contact with you. Well, the American Small Business League, as far as I can tell, is the only organization in America that's trying to stop the government from giving small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms. We're the only organization that's trying to stop the Obama administration from closing the Small Business Administration. And again, as far as I can tell, I don't want to offend anybody, but I think we're the only small business group that's not funded by Fortune 500 firms. Mm -hmm. so people should go to our website, ASBL.com, take a look at it, and uh, I'm trying to raise money to get my bill passed. If I can get H.R. 1622 passed, I think it's going to create more jobs than anything that uh, has ever been proposed. And it's a great piece of legislation. Like I said, no new taxes, no new spending. And we're just trying to fight, you know, for small businesses and uh, keep the failed programs to help them in place and uh, try to stop them from giving the small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms, which just seems insane to me. So your bill, to, to clarify that again, would essentially clarify the definition of a small business so that it doesn't include these fortune 500 companies because they're coming in and basically saying uh, anybody is a small business no matter how large they are and so you would clarify that with your your bill hr 1622 is that it yeah would close the loophole right right okay well thank you very much lloyd chapman thank for you. joining us and uh, best luck to you i hope you get that passed we need some sanity and a little bit of truth in government for a change how about that thank you very much thank you bye-bye well, small business in the media is alternative media, like InfoWars. And we have a niche to fill that the big companies just aren't going to do. As you heard Lloyd Chapman say, they spike the stories, they skew the stories. We do our best to tell the truth as we see it, to be frank and honest with you. And one of the ways that you can support us is to buy products at InfoWarsStore.com. And we've got the exclusive pre-book of this new movie here, State of Mind. It's a documentary about the psychology of mind control. It starts pre-booking today. It releases in a month. And InfoWars has this film exclusively. We have an exclusive window. It'll not be in theaters. It's not on YouTube. And you can only get it at InfoWars for the first 90 days. So you can support InfoWars and for a limited time, When you buy State of Mind, you will also get a free copy of this excellent animation, The American Dream. It's a great animated film that very entertaining way explains the banking system and the corruption, why housing prices skyrocket and then plunge, how the banking system works, what is the Federal Reserve, things that everybody needs to know. It's a great way to wake people up. It's a lot of fun. You'll get a free copy of this while supplies last when you buy a copy of State of Mind, The Psychology of Control. And again, this is exclusively at InfoWars for the first 90 days of its release. You can start pre-booking that right now. It's a great way to support our operation here. Go to InfoWarsStore.com and get a copy of those two films. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.